Let's go back, scroll, there we go, that's what we're trying to do. And we'll click on a photo, and this time I'll let it load in the full screen version of that photo, because obviously when you've taken photos, you want to see them in detail as well. And if you want additional information, I can just tap on the photo, it brings in some text, and we have these nice transitions all the time um, throughout the application. So how would you build an application like this? Well, let's take a look and see how we'd do that. And I'm actually going to be using Expression Blend 4 for Windows Phone. So when I hit uh, New Project, you'll see that I've got a New Project template type here for Windows Phone. I'm just going to hit OK and go straight into the, uh, into the application. And you'll notice it's exactly the same as what Scott showed before. We've got the Windows Phone look and feel. As I start to drag out components, they take on the right sort of styling for these applications. And obviously, I can very easily change the orientation as well. You know, a very important feature for designing for a device. So let's start to build the application UI. So we'll start off by bringing in the logo we need to use for this. And actually, I'm bringing in an FXG file. This is the file that my designer created for me a little bit earlier. So we just add that to my project, and then I'll just add that into my design surface like so. Obviously, I just need to resize that so it fills the available space at the top of the application there. Now, you may have noticed it's not quite got the right background color on there, so we're just going to go back out and edit that in my external editing application, which in this case is Adobe Illustrator. Now, for the designers in the audience, you've probably already realized why I've got this awful background color on there. It's very difficult designing a white logo on a white background, so I just had that in there as a, as a placeholder. So I just save that down, come back into Blend, and then you'll see the logo update itself on the design surface. So we have this really nice workflow between the different tools that you use. Down here is where we're going to build out the main part of the application. And to do that, we obviously need to have some data. So I got my developer to actually create a couple of view models for me that I'm going to use within this application. Now, the great thing about uh, Blend is for, from the design point of view is I don't need to know anything about what these view models are. I can just use them. So the way I use them is I literally just add them to my data panel over here. So let's just see what the developer's given me. Well, he's given me a way to view the photos that were taken over the last week. And he's also allowing me to see the photos that were taken over the last day as well. So now we've added those uh, data items to my data panel. Designing with data in Blend is incredibly easy. I want to have some photos. I literally just pick them up, drag them, and drop them. And by default, I get a list box down here on the design surface, a data-bound list box. I don't need to do any, any coding to make that happen. I'm just going to resize that so it fills up the available area of the application down there. Now, at the moment, everything is listed out as a standard list box. I'm just going to change the way that that looks and just drag on this style here. Now, if you've not seen Blend before, that looks like magic. It's like, how did that happen? Well, actually, all we've done is a list box is really a stack panel. It just stacks uh, things in order like that. We've just changed that stack panel for a wrap panel, and things just flow nicely as a wrap panel there. So a very simple change, but a very dynamic update of the UI there. We can also, if you want to, come in and start to edit how that data actually looks. So for example, if we want to have the photos a little bit bigger, I can very quickly redesign that live on the design surface there. So it's very easy to design with data with Blend. What I'm just going to do is just apply the original style back, just to uh, snap it back into how it looked before. So that's great. So we've got the logo. We've got the data-driven uh, graphics down here, the photos. We now need to design the, the menu system. So we're going to just come over here and just rename these menu items. First one, we'll just change and call this week. So it'll show the photos from the past week. We'll change the next one to month. And it will show the photos from the past month. You can probably see how this is going to work now. We'll change the fourth item here to all photos. And then we'll change the first one just to show the photos from today. So what happens when somebody clicks on this Today button in the menu? What photos do we show? Well, literally, I just need to link that to my data. So I just click on the New button, choose Show the Photos from Today, and hit OK. And then I do exactly the same thing for Week as well. When somebody clicks on the Week button, I want you to see the photos from the previous week. So that's great. So now the application knows exactly what photos to display 
It just doesn't know how to actually trigger that change. So to do that, we're actually going to use another blend feature called a behavior. Now, behaviors are fantastic. They're little snippets of production-ready code that allow me to add interactivity really quickly to my applications, literally just by dragging and dropping. And we've added some interactivity now. And the really nice thing about behaviors is then I can change the way the behavior works using the property inspector. So in this case, I want this behavior to actually do something when the selected item in the menu changes. So when I click on today, week, month, or all, I want it to do something. What do I want it to do? I want it to change these photographs. So to do that, I literally use my new element picker here, and I literally point and shoot. And now the menu and the photos are connected together. All of the data binding and the connectivity happens in the background. Blend takes care of that for me. So I also just want to add another uh, behavior now. And this is going to take care of the navigation. So when I click on one of these photos, I want to go through to the full screen view of that photo. So I just drop on the navigation behavior and then tell it which page we actually want it to navigate to in the application. And in this case, I want it to navigate to the details page.xaml. So we're almost there now. We've just got one final area of the application to build. We need to actually build that details page. So let's just open that up. And immediately, you can see that this is a completely blank new page. And uh, just to save a bit of time, uh, yesterday I created a, a mock-up of what this page should look like in Adobe Photoshop. And on the import panel here, I have total control over which layers I'm going to import. But in this case, I'm just going to import absolutely everything. So at this point in time, I've got my graphics in there, but they're just standard static graphics. And we're building a data-bound, data-driven application. So how do we sort of link these to the data we've got over here? Well, literally, we drag and drop, and the text updates immediately. And we'll just do that again. We'll drag and drop. And notice how the text keeps exactly the same font, style, coloring that it had in the original file the designer gave to me. The only difference is now that is data bound and before it is static. The final thing we need to do on this part is actually data bind the image as well. And you know exactly what I'm going to do, drag and drop. Now, if you think back to the application we saw on the phone, when we went through to the details page, we had the full screen view of the photo. When we clicked on the photo, we swapped and saw the text. So it's almost like a switch, switching from one to the, to the other, but with a really nice transition between the two. So let's see how you can build that really quickly inside of Blend. And the way we're going to do that is I'm actually going to take this whole details page and turn it into a user control, turn it into a control, rather. And the control we're going to turn it into is a toggle button. So we just select that and hit OK. And then all we need to do is decide how we want this to start displaying when people come to the details page. So this is what the page looks like by default. And you can immediately tell that this is wrong, because we want to see the photo by default. So I'm just going to come over here to my property inspector and literally just take that text and get rid of it for a second. Then when someone clicks on the photo, down here, this is my checked state, we actually want to see the text again. So I'm just going to bring that back. So we've got exactly the effect we want. We come to the page, we see the photo, we click on the photo, we see the text. And now, of course, I can start to refine how this transition is going to occur. I do this exactly the same way I do with a regular Silver application. I just control this via the timer over here. So I'm just going to set that to happen over half a second. And then I just want to add a little bit more texture to my animation. At the moment, it's very linear. I'm just going to add some acceleration and deceleration there as well. So I just need to do one final thing. I'm just going to reset uh, this part of the application, and then we can test this in the emulator. And when I hit F5, I get the choice to test it on the emulator or on the device. I'm going to choose emulator. And the emulator is fantastic. It's like having the phone without having the phone. It's uh, exactly the same environment. So let's bring that to the front. Here's the, the, the today view. I click on a photo. It transitions through to the full screen view. When we click on that, we go through and see the text. So that was a photo of Mount Rainier. Let's go back to the, the uh, full screen app. Click on the week view. It animates and navigates through to the week view. We can scroll and look at the photos, choose a different photo that looks interesting. Click on that. We see the full screen view of that photo because it's a data-bound application, and the text is updated there. So that was Expression Blend for Windows Phone. We've built a data-driven, multi-screen phone application in about eight minutes. And with that, I'll hand back to Scott.
Thank you. Thanks, John.